Welcome to a video that I've probably had requested more than any other. What are the most reliable cars on a budget of £4,000 in today's market? Well, coming up is my top 10 list if reliability on a budget is important to you. So I'm going to start with the physically smallest cars and work my way to the largest, just so this video's got a bit of range to it. And with that in mind, we start with the very small, yet brilliant, Toyota Aigo. Now this is the exact same car as the Citroen C1 or the Peugeot 107, so take your pick out of those three. These are cheap, no frills, low cost motoring at its best. One little advisory though is a lot of these have been driven by learner drivers, so make sure that clutch is okay, make sure the body work is looking okay when you actually go and view one. Now if you need something a little bit bigger than that, it has to be the mighty Honda Jazz. I've owned several of these personally, we still have some in the family and they never die. Now from a maintenance point of view, these are all timing chains so there's no belts to worry about, that's going to cut down on maintenance costs and honestly if you buy one of these and it's not been serviced in like 10 years and just had the oil topped up, chances are it's still going to run great, they really are that reliable. Now the big killer on them is rust, so stick around until the end of this video and I'll give you a buyer's guide to show you exactly what to check if it is a Jazz that you're going for. Now staying with that Honda theme, if the granny image of the Jazz is just too much for you and you can get away with something slightly less boxy and van like, then a Civic could be a great idea as well. Now same rules apply to these, rust is starting to take hold, but I'm going to give you some tips as we progress through this video as to how you can minimise the risk of buying a bad one. Now a 4K budget will see you into one of the slightly later spaceship dashboard type Civics, which personally I still think look really cool today. Now there's not really a bad engine in the range either, so take your pick. Just be aware if you do go for the 2.2 litre diesel, these do fall foul of the new ULEZ regulations, so if you need to drive into town, that's maybe one to avoid. Now Toyota had two cars that rivaled both the Jazz and the Civic. These of course were the Yaris and the Corolla. Now quite honestly, if you prefer the look of the Yaris over a Jazz or a Corolla over a Civic, you could go for one of these. These are really, really reliable cars as well. You can pick up a decent Yaris from about £1,500 nowadays and it will just run and run and run. No frills, low cost, cheap motoring at its best, as I say. Now, the Corolla is basically just a bigger version of the Yaris. So if you prefer the Toyota brand to the Honda brand, there you go. Now getting larger, there's plenty of reliable saloon and estate style cars that can be run on a shoestring budget. But before we get to them, quick favour to ask from you guys, if you're getting value from this video, please do hit the like button. And also, we create buyer's guides for all these cars as well, so this channel might be a worthwhile subscribe. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Okay, so estates and saloons. Now available as both of those styles is the Honda Accord. Honda should have really sponsored this video, I think. Now there is a good reason why you see so many of these Accords available for sale with two, 300,000 miles, galactic mileages on them, and it's because they can take them so well. So again, a really reliable bet. Another top tip on an Accord is their catalytic converters. The cats on them are some of the most valuable available. So if you do buy one of these, run it until end of life and you send it off to the scrappers, you're gonna get a good return on those cats as well as the scrap metal from the car. Now another solid bet in the mid-size range category is the Skoda Octavia, the only non-Japanese car that we've got in this list. You know the one is usually taking you home from a night out with your kebab in the back. Now again, if you have a look at the used market, there's a good reason that you'll see these for sale with two, three hundred thousand miles on them as well. They will do these mileages, but a little advisory on it, they're not going to be as trouble free as something like an Accord. Chances are you're going to need to do a turbo at some point if it's a diesel. You might have to contend with some DPF issues. They're still great reliable cars, but maybe not quite as trouble free as something like a two litre Accord. Now when you are buying a used car on a budget, chances are it's going to have a few more miles on it, it's going to be a few years older. That's why it's so important that you check it over carefully and those checks should begin before you've even left the house. Now one tool that I'll use to do this is vehiclescore.co.uk, completely free tool, put the registration plate of the car that you're interested in into their system and it will tell you the good and bad points about that car using a whole source of information in the background. 
Now, these guys also provide paid HPI reports and I cannot recommend enough. Do one of these and get the full picture of that car's background. That's gonna tell you if it's been stolen, if it's been an insurance write-off, any mileage discrepancies, basically any skeletons in that car's closet are gonna come out. And here's an added little bonus. Here's a code to get 15% off on the vehiclescore.co.uk website. Don't say I'm not good to you. Now bigger cars then, GP type stuff, maybe you've got a big dog you need to fit in there, maybe you need it to work in all conditions like snow and whatnot. Well, I'm going to shock you all here because I'm going to recommend another Honda, this time the Honda CRV. Now this is one that I can definitely personally vouch for because I actually owned an old Mark II CRV. Eventually with galactic mileage on it, rust killed it. But before we sent it off to the scrapyard, we put it through a durability test and put it here on YouTube. So we rolled this thing, we crashed it, we shot it. We basically done everything we could think of in order to kill this car and it still worked by the end of it. Now these Mark II CRVs are tough, tough cars and if that's what you need, go for one of these. You're gonna get two choices of engine here, either the petrol or the diesel. Personally, I'd vouch for the petrol. It's just simpler. The diesel's got a turbo, it's got the DPF and stuff on there. There's more to go wrong. You'll spend a bit more on petrol with the petrol one, a bit more on fuel, I should say, but it's worth it because these engines, they just don't go wrong. Now, of course, Toyota had an alternative to the CRV as well. You can see the running theme here. Their equivalent to the CRV was the RAV4. Again, a really reliable car, similar price point to the CRV, similar kind of size, similar all road, snow, off road type capability. Honestly, it's just going to come down to what one you prefer. Me personally, I prefer the Honda brand. I think I prefer the way the CRV looks as well, but the RAV4s, equally as reliable. And finally, number 10, the largest car of this list. Now this is gonna be reserved for those of you who need a particularly big car or some good off-road ability. And that of course is the Toyota Land Cruiser, well known for being indestructible, but be careful. On your 4,000 pound budget, you are gonna be stretching a little bit. So it's gonna be older, it's gonna have a good few miles on it. So some silly little things are likely to go wrong, but overall, a pretty indestructible car. Now thank you so much for watching, please do hit that subscribe button for similar videos, let me know your thoughts below in the comments section and give this video a like. See you next time.